Hello everyone. Today we will have the glance on one of the most important topic of your GET XC and Excel examination in the domain of food technology. That is the topic is, uh, is from the food chemistry and the name of the topic is your carbohydrate. So let's, ha let's have the glance of the carbohydrate, what exactly carbohydrates are, what is their classification and what is its role. So we will have a brief overview for the carbohydrates. Now carbohydrates. Now from the word itself, what we can define is, these are your hydrates of carbon, okay, the basic definition, or we can define it as the polyhydroxy aldehydes or polyhydroxy ketones. So let's have, let's have the basic introduction about the carbohydrates. So carbohydrates, as I said, you can define it as the polyhydroxy aldehydes or polyhydroxy ketones, or these compounds that can be hydrolyzed to your aldehydes and ketones. So this is nothing but this is the carbohydrate. Now they are also defined as the aldehyde or the ketone derivative. Okay, so all of you are known with the group aldehyde and the ketone group. So uh, you can define carbohydrates as the derivative of your aldehyde and the ketone group or uh, polyhydric alcohols or in other words, the carbohydrates are your nothing but polyhydroxy aldehydes or polyhydroxy ketone. So this is the very basic definition of the carbohydrates whenever someone is going to ask you to define the carbohydrates. So mostly we define it in this manner. Now the thing is, there is an empirical formula to represent the carbohydrates. Whenever you have to represent the carbohydrates, so there should be one formula. So that formula is CxH2O y. Like C uh, x will be your how many number of carbon atoms will be there, and y will represent how many your H2O group will be present. Okay, like H and OH. We know now these groups are present in the carbohydrates. So this is nothing but this is the empirical formula. Now organic compound. What are the what is the content or what are the compounds which are present in the carbohydrate? So these are your carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. The very important three compounds which are present in carbohydrates are your carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. And thus carbohydrates are also called as your hydrates of carbon, which I said like from the word itself, you can define hydrates of carbon that is known as the carbohydrates. Now let's see the classification. Now, basically, uh, carbohydrates, these are classified into the main groups depending on the saccharide unit, like how many uh, sugar units basically are, are present or the saccharide. Like uh, all of you may have heard about the monosaccharide, disaccharide, polysaccharides, likewise. So on the basis of the saccharide unit, we, need, we can just classify the carbohydrates. So here in this chart, what you can see is carbohydrates are classified in three basic categories. The first one is your monosaccharides. The second one is your oligosaccharides and the third one is polysaccharide. Now in monosaccharide, basically it will have the single uh, saccharide unit, okay? So the examples are your triose, tetrose, pentose or your hexose sugar, okay? Like you can have the example of the glucose. So likewise, you can consider the example. In oligosaccharides, oligosaccharides, you can have the disaccharides, you can have the trisaccharide, you can have the tetra. Like from two... Oh, 2 to 10 carbon atoms you can have in the case of all polysaccharides, while poly, uh, polysaccharides will have greater than 10. Okay, it can be 500, it can be 700, it can be 50, so greater than 10, whatever number is going to be there, those are your polysaccharides. So when you go for the oligosaccharides, oligosaccharides are classified into your disaccharide, trisaccharide and tetrasaccharide. While your polysaccharide can be into uh, classified into the homosaccharide and polysaccharide, okay? Like you will have the homopolymer, you will have the heteropolymer, and then you can have the polysaccharide chain. So we will see that. Suppose uh, here you have the disaccharide, so you can have the example of the lactose sugar, where you will have the glucose and the lactose, trisaccharide, you can have the daphnose, okay? Likewise, you can consider the example. So this is the very basic classification of carbohydrates, uh, basically in three categories. Monosaccharide, disaccharide, and polysaccharides. Now, when you go for the isomerism of carbohydrates, okay, see, a carbohydrate can exist in various of different forms. Like uh, they will bear as a carbohydrate, they will be represented. But the thing is, in the form, in the manner which they are going to be represented, so that matters over here. So, on the basis of that, it can have the aldose ketose isomerism, it can have the stereo isomerism, or it can have the optical isomerism. Okay, so compounds will have the same molecular formula, but the in the structure, in what structure you are going to represent them. So that will matter and that will vary. So on the basis of that, like in what structure you are going to represent them, we we have the isomerism of monosaccharides. So here in this picture, what you can see is okay. Here you can observe, you have the two, like you have the fructose, you have the glucose. 
okay now both the glucose and fructose will have the same molecular formula the molecular formula for both the compound is same okay if you count the carbon atom if you count the hydrogen and oxygen so you will get like you will have the same number of carbon hydrogen and oxygen but this structure you can observe over here this structure and in this structure there is a vast difference okay see so on the basis of that you are uh, these are the isomers of each other fructose and glucose are isomers of each other okay so uh, the structure like if they have the structural differences so we call them as the isomers so one is your aldose sugar one is your ketone sugar okay so th the first one is your aldose ketose isomerism now we will go for the second type in second type what you will have is you you can have the optical activity or you will have the stereo isomerism so when you will have the optical activity over there so you will get the chiral compound now we will see what is the chiral carbon so here what you can observe is this carbon now which is present at the center and here also this carbon this carbon is present as the chiral chiral means they will like if this is the carbon so on it has the valency of 4 so on each side it will have the different molecule x y z w okay so all the molecules are different of this carbon uh, like all the molecules which are going to satisfy the valency of the carbon these are going to be different so that's why this carbon is your chiral carbon the same thing is occurring over here okay now the thing is here uh, this is your glycerol dia this is your glycerol dia molecule now one is l glycerol dia uh, one is d so l is nothing but it is levo rotatory and d is nothing but it is dextro rotatory okay so levo means left dextro means right side so what you can see this oh group is present on the left side okay so that's why this is l glycerol dia that is levo rotatory while dextro means right side so oh group is present on the right side so this is d glycerol dia okay and this is the chiral ca carbon this carbon which is present at the center is chiral because uh, the each carbon atom or uh, like valency of carbon is satisfied by different molecule okay each molecule is different suppose it will be like this is c this is your oh is to oh this is also oh and then you can have this cw1 o and here you can have the h now this is not at all chiral carbon why because here also you are getting oh here also you are getting oh so this is not chiral okay chiral means all the compounds which are present around it are different now if you have to calculate how many isomers it is going to form so the number of chiral carbon in the molecule like 2 raised to n this n is nothing but number of chiral com carbon okay if there are Oh, if now there is one carbon atom that is chiral, so two raised to one is equal to two. So this molecule can form the two isomers. So likewise, you have to remember two to the power n. This is the formula to count how many isomers your particular carbon atom can form. Now next phase, your epimerization. So what is epimerization? Epimerization is nothing but it is interconversion of your epimer to the other epimer. Okay, like it will have the enzyme epimerase. So like from the definition, you won't get, but from the uh, example we will see you will have the galactose so galactose uh, conversion of the galactose to the glucose in liver this is the example of epimerize epimerization now let's see over here you have the glucose you have the galactose now what we are calling as a epimers basically glucose to galactose now observe these two molecules okay so what you can see is this carbon four and here your carbon four this oh is present on your d uh, side and this uh, is present on like only oh group position is changing okay at the second carbon it is same but at the fourth carbon it is changing so your glucose and galactose are epimer which c4 epimer because at fourth carbon this oh group is changing while your mannose and galactose are the c2 epimers because at second carbon their position is changing the oh group is present on the left side while here this present on the right side So their position is changing. Like uh, if mannose, this is your D mannose structure. But what is happening if the position is changing over here? So it become into glucose. Uh, and the thing is, at the C two carbon, it is changing. Okay, so interconversion of one epimer to another. This is nothing but this is the interconversion. Hence, we are calling this mannose and glucose as C two epimers, while glucose and galactose are your C four because at fourth carbon atom, your uh, uh, position is changing. Okay, so this is known as the epimerization. now the very important uh, terminology or very important topic in the carbohydrates is your gelatinization okay all of you may have heard about the gelatinization now it is the very basic and very common thing to be remember 
Now the thing is, what is happening in the gelatinization? So in gelatinization, your starch granules are going to be swell. If this is your granule, if this is your starch molecule, so it will swell. Okay, it will swell. Why? Because you are going to provide the heat. Okay, you are going to provide the heat and it is present in the water. So due to that heat, it will result in the thickening of the starch molecule or it will uh, leach out the amylose from the granule of water or here uh, like leaching out of amylose can take place. Okay, so this uh, will give the viscous texture to your uh, whatever product you are going to have or to your uh, thing which you are heated. So it will give the viscous transparent texture. Now the process of breaking down the intermolecular bonds here, it will have some bond, but due to heat, those bonds are broken down. Okay, and in the presence of water and heat, this is happening. Now uh, this will allow the hydrogen binding site to engage the more water uh, because as it is swelling, so more water will get entered. So this is nothing but this is known as the gelatinization. So basically it has these three states. Step one is swelling, second is double helical melting, third is amylose leaching. Now in swelling, what will happen due to heat? Your water will get entrapped into that amorphous star structure. Now the double helical melting means when water will enter into that structure. So the tightly bound areas of your double helical structure of amylopectin that will be uh, present. Okay. Now due to the heat, what will happen? That structure will get diffused. Okay, diffused. And what happen? Your amylose chain will begin to dissolve. So as your amylose chain will begin to dissolve. So your leaching of amylose can take place. So this is the third step where you will have the amylose leaching. So in gelatinization, what you have to remember is it is the three step thing, swelling, double helical melting and amylose leaching. So here in this uh, picture, it will get more clear. It, you have the draw starch and due to addition of water, this starch molecule are swollen over here. You can observe. Then uh, due to heat, uh, due to addition of heat and more water, there is breaking or rupture. And due to rupture, this is your gelatinized starch where you will have the leaching of amylose. So this is the thing, gelatinization. The next thing and very important is your retrogradation. So in retrogradation, there will be the increase in the crystalline area in your starch molecule and this will affect the palatability or the texture of your product. Now how it is going to occur? So this retrogradation can be in the three form. The first is the amylose amylose. Second one is amylose and amylopectin. Third one is amylopectin amylopectin. Now due to the strong association of the hydrogen bonding, due to strong presence of the hydrogen bonding, your amylose molecule will form the stiff gel or it will form the firm gel in retrogradation. Now this amylopectin molecule will be longer branch and there will be a structure that they are going to form the gel. Now high amylopectin will have this stable gel, but it will, it will be softer than the amylose. Okay, if you have the high amylopectin, so obviously it is going to form the stable gel, but it will be softer than the amylose. Now, let's see how this retrogradation is going to occur. So here, what you can see is this is your viscosity. Like the, from this graph, what you can observe is on x axis uh, on y axis, you have the viscosity on x. You have the temperature as your temperature is increased, your gelatinization will take place. OK, this this up to this, you have the gelatinization. Now, what will happen after your temperature when you stop heating? Now, again, that starch molecule will come together and they will bind. They will bind and this is the aging. Now, after this, whatever is going to happen, that is your retrogradation. Okay, that is the retrogradation. Now, the thing is, you will have the two types of enzyme. You will have the amylase. So, uh, you will have the liquefying enzyme and saccharifying. So, alpha amylase, alpha amylase is your liquefying enzyme. Always remember this. And beta amylase is your saccharifying enzyme. Okay. Now, this is all the basic of the carbohydrates. If you want the more knowledge about the carbohydrate, you can join our batch. Okay. So uh, this is the brief overview of the carbohydrate. Please like, share and subscribe. Okay. Thank you.